G'day guys, welcome back to Truth Footy. Uh, not long ago on the channel, I made a video ranking every player that got traded this year into different categories of how good they are as players. So I thought I'd sort of readapt that model and apply it to last year's trade period and rank players based on their impact on the new club. So I guess what we're trying to ascertain is who are the best and most valuable trade recruits from 12 months ago. So we're gonna use Tier Maker once again, one of my favorite visual aids. And uh, if you like, I'll leave a link in the description to this. I didn't actually make this particular Tier Maker. So if you wanna have a crack at it yourself, I'll leave the link in the description. But I've separated it into five categories, those who had strong impact, those who had a decent impact, those who were low impact but cheap. There's there's a number of players as you look down the bottom here of players that were moved across as depth and didn't really do much, but I don't know if I'd really slaughter them for that in terms of assessment. We do have to have a category here for guys who were below expectation and then another category for players who were in uh, injured entirely. So for instance, Tom Dode did an ACL, I think in the preseason before round one or opening round. Um, so he probably gets his own category along with a few others here. So without further ado, let's crack into this and uh, uh, as always, I'm going to probably start with one in each category. So Tom Dodé is a great example of a player who is uh, injured and probably not worth putting in this as, as far as assessment goes. Who was below expectation? I might actually, I feel harsh doing this, but perhaps because I support this club, it's a little bit easier for me to do this. I think Tyler Brockman probably categorizes himself as that. Look, he wasn't an expensive trade. I think it was 44 and 63. So you could say low impact, but cheap. But we expected Brockman to be a best 22 player and um, he didn't really look anything like that, even in a team that finished third last. And there were also, there was also a behavioral incident. So I think Brockman probably is the first player I put in here. I feel harsh doing it, but someone's got to go in there, right? Low impact, but cheap. Oh, look, there's a few. We can we can probably fill out this section um, next, but um, this is Brandon Ryan, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think he played a game for the Brisbane Lions. And again, it's no point really assessing that. I don't think he was expected to play games this year. Now let's go for a decent impact player. Would it be really rogue if I say Ben Mackay did have a decent impact at Essendon? Now, this is probably a bad one to start because I think this is pretty divisive. I've seen harsh opinions about Ben Mackay's first year at Essendon, but I've also seen some stats to suggest he actually had a pretty good impact. They signed him as a free agent. So I think decent impact for a free agent. Bearing in mind, I know that he frustrated some people this year. I think he qualifies as deep, decent impact. Who goes into strong impact? Probably Brody Grundy. Um, what do you have, like 32 head outs a game this year. Again, you, you factor in the cost a little bit. It wasn't a massively expensive trade for the Sydney Swans and really added to a position that they needed. And obviously it was a, an important part of a, of a midfield that went deep this year, all the way to the grand final or at times the best team in the competition. So I think that's a rock solid start. Maybe we start by filling out a few of the injured players and the low impact but cheap players. Kaczynski played like 14 games for 12 goals, but cost pick 49 from memory in a trade. So yeah, probably fill that one out. Shane McAdam was injured. I think he did a hamstring, played like three games. Probably a bit harsh to really form an assessment based on that. Joel Hamling, I don't know if he was injured. So I'm just going to put him in low impact but cheap, but he didn't play a game. I don't know if Sydney needed him. Um, I can't really remember, but I, I, either way, he came that there as mature depth, didn't play a game. I, I don't feel comfortable putting him in below expectation. I cannot remember if he got injured. James Harms is a tricky one. Uh, I had to go do some research to see if he got injured. I think he just played like eight games or something this year um, or similar to that. He did a bad hamstring injury mid-year. I think there's too little to assess there, to be honest. Same thing with Nick Caulfield. Played eight games, came over with an injury history. These guys were kind of cheap acquisitions, uh, but, you know, probably harsh to say low impact, but cheap. I'd say they were injured. So tough one. Now, at what line do you put the injured in, and therefore in this category? Because there were some players that played 12 games we'll get to. But anyway, moving on, I think it's fair to put them in that category. Uh, Tom Fullerton, again, low impact, but cheap. I don't think he played a game for Melbourne this year. Paddy Dow played a, a, num a few games. I, again, I'm not sure if he got injured but he showed something which is i think satisfactory for what he cost obviously a bit of a discounted trade of a former hard draft pick i think he came in and showed some signs but didn't play that much so again probably low impact but cheap i don't think he was below expectation that's for sure this is chris burgess yeah i don't think he did much either this year but again was probably always more of a depth option. Maybe that'll do for now. Um, should we chuck another player in below expectation? Uh, again, this might ruffle some feathers. Uh, look, maybe you start with Biggie Nuon. Again, 
Low impact but cheap probably applies to Biggie here. And I do always think this one was a bit of a roll of the dice and they needed some mature depth. However, he did get delisted in his first season. So that kind of implies he didn't meet some level of expectations. I feel a bit harsh saying that, but again, we do need to put some people in that category. And I think the first two are probably about right. What about Ivan Soldo? Where do you put Ivan Soldo? He came in, you know, won a lot of hit outs. I think he got injured, then didn't win his way back into the team. Do you put below expectation? I think possibly. And I'm, I don't actually mean that as my opinion, but Port Adelaide probably sought him out as the number one man with Jordan Sweet behind that. And then Jordan Sweet kind of usurped him a little bit. So you kind of say that was probably below expectation. Port Adelaide probably hoped that it played out differently. And therefore, I'd probably elevate Jordan Sweet to decent impact. Now, again, not all of these players in decent impact necessarily will be of the same caliber of player, but when you consider the cost, I think Jordan Sweet came over as a, as a depth option. I thought it was weird at the time they recruited two rucks at the same time, but I think their intention was Soldo number one and Sweet number two. And in the end, Sweet ended the year in the team. So I think you gotta give him credit for that. Whilst acknowledging Soldo didn't have the year that maybe Port Adelaide had wanted. And again, he far exceeded what Brockman and Biggie Nuon did this year, but that's probably still the right category. Let's start throwing some names in the top category. Massimo D'Ambrosio might be the recruiter of the year, considering the cost as well. Former mid-season draftee from Essendon, got to Hawthorne, and uh, didn't make the All-Australian team in the end, but would have been a fairly worthy candidate for a wing spot and had a fantastic season. So when you consider impact on their team, Massimo D'Ambrosio definitely belongs in the top category there. I've just spotted Matthew Flynn here. He got injured and I think goes into this category here. He did come back into the team in the waffle at the end of the year and didn't play particularly well, but he did a nasty injury. So uh, having played two games at AFL level probably goes in that category. Would you say Taylor Adams had a decent impact? Yes, probably. Um, you know, I think he averaged oh, 17 touches a game. I did some brief research before this video started. And, um, you know, he was solid, but he was 30, didn't cost a lot, and added some depth to a team that highlighted its need for midfield depth at the start of the year with Callum Mills' injury. I think he did all right, to be honest, and he didn't make the grand final team in the end, but I think for what this trade was ever going to be, I don't know if he was ever considered their plan A for being a gun midfielder. I don't think that was the thinking here. So I'm gonna be lenient on Taylor Adams. I think if, they, if he'd been 28, and then I probably would have put him in the below expectation, which again would be harsh because he was in the team for so long. They actually did have an oversupply of mids at times, Sydney. Zach Fisher is another tricky one. Um, I've been gauging North Melbourne's fans and they're a little bit divided on him and some think he won't even start the, team, the year in, in the team next year with Caleb Daniels' acquisition, but I do think he had a decent impact. I don't think you can say anything other than that. We added about 24 disposals a game, running off halfback. They highlighted him as a player of need, mature bodied, run and carry on the outside. I think he I think he provided that, so I don't feel comfortable putting him in any other section there. However, Dylan Stevens probably was below expectation. Again, I think they were traded for a similar round, if I'm not mistaken. Perhaps I'm a little bit iffy on that, but in terms of cost, it would have been similar. Dylan Stevens, I, I thought was probably going to provide more to North Melbourne this year. He averaged like 12 disposals a game uh, for a wingman. I, I think that's fair to say that's probably below expectation. Todd Goldstein's another tricky one. I'm going to put decent impact. Again, we, we're talking about a veteran who crossed clubs to extend his career a little bit and added real value, I think. Just played the 14 games. So again, is that above the threshold of injured? Um, yeah, no, I think I think he definitely qualifies as decent impact. I think he really added something to Essendon this year. What about Port Adelaide's talls that were recruited? So we talked about Jordan Sweet going in decent impact. Do we also put a Sava and Brendan Zerk Thatcher in there? I mean, they played every game. Both of them added to a new look dynamic that Port Adelaide had, obviously a pretty different backline to the one we've, we've seen in recent times. Obviously there was Tom Cleary previously, Tom Jonas, and now it was a Sava and Brendan. Now, Asafa moved forward and I don't think with amazing success, he just kicked four goals this entire season. I can't remember how long he played in the forward line. I think he added something. He didn't cost a first rounder, but they did have to do some legwork to get pick 25 from memory. I think they did a split with Fremantle. Can't remember exactly how they got that done, but you know, I wouldn't say it was below expectation personally. I don't think the expectation should have been that high on those guys as individuals. They played every game, they added a structural piece. I think it's decent and they certainly, I wouldn't say made a strong impact. Jack Billings is a tricky one in terms of where he goes. Um, I think he was decent, but not quite best 22 at the Melbourne Footy Club. Um, you could say low impact, but cheap. Now, 
When you say cheat with a free agent, that's tricky because then technically, do you consider all free agents to be cheap? In a sense they are, but you don't give any trade collateral, but I can't imagine he was on a very big contract based on the compensation that uh, St. Kilda got. So below expectation is probably a bit harsh. I don't know what the level of expectation was on Jack Billings at Melbourne. So yeah, look, he was a fringe player, but again, probably one of those low key free agency moves and probably a bit rough to say below expectation. I think he provided a bit. Melbourne fans, let me know. I've seen some mixed opinions on Jack Billings. What about Jade Gresham? So again, you could probably say the same thing, but based on the compensation pick St. Kilda got, there's a reasonable contract offer there. And Jade Gresham actually had his worst year statistically in some time. I don't think he kicked a goal a game. And he averaged about 14, 13 possessions a game, whereas normally that's up about 17. I might have those numbers slightly off, but he did definitely have a bit of a down year. And obviously, you know, plenty of time to turn it around. He's not he's not a veteran, but he is, I think, turning 29 next season, if I'm remembering that correctly. So he does need to improve. So I'd say he's one where Essendon probably did expect more, and that makes him distinctly different to Jack Billings. But again... It's a little bit of my perception coming into it. Let's talk about some of these Hawthorne boys. We've sort of delayed those quite a lot. I think Ginnivan probably had strong impact. Again, uh, kicked oh, 20 in the high 20s of goals, a pretty good playmaker up the field. Considering the trade, it was so cheap. I think he goes in that top category. And I do also have a little bit of bias towards what was the trade that got it done. And Hawthorne came out of that so convincingly as winners that I think he goes into strong impact. Hawthorne smashed it. I'll also put Marbio Chol. So that cost them a future second, I think, to get that done and, and a little bit of change as well. Marbio Chol wasn't elite, but he kicked 37 goals this year. So I think that probably puts him in that top category. And now as I look at that category below, I think Marbio Chol exceeded pretty much everyone there. Goldstein just played the 14 games. I think it's fair to conclude Hawthorne cleaned up last year. On the other hand, Gunston, was he decent impact? Probably decent impact. Again, he was cheap, so he could also go, well, actually, no, he wasn't low impact. I think he got 29 goals from 18 games this year and a great like leader. Obviously took Kul Shadir under his wing. That's been well documented. And I think it was a great move in general. But did he have a strong impact? He probably wasn't on the Chol or Ginevan or certainly not D'Ambrosio level. Lucky Schultz, probably below expectation considering the cost. Now it was a future first selection that Collingwood didn't expect to become pick uh, 11. I think it was pick 11 and Fremantle's original pick was pick 10 and they traded both to Richmond. Um, so it was, it was a fair cost to give up to be honest for Lockie Schultz and he didn't have a horrendous year but he was below expectation I would say he was meant to really add something to that Collingwood team I do rate him as a player and I do think he'll have a, a better year next year and the team will have a better year next year is my personal prediction but I think for the cost you have to say Lockie Schultz was a bit below expectation James Jordan I'm going to put him in strong impact he played every game this year for a team that was the best team for a large period of it um, you know played 26 games played on grand final day and, um, you know, stats won't tell the story with his impact. I think a lot of his defensive running and tagging work, I think, um, you know, clearly puts him in the strong impact category. Liam Henry's a tough one to judge. I thought he played well for St Kilda, but again, played the 12 games. And I think towards the end of the year, did a knee injury that ruled him out for the season. So where do you put him? I'd probably put him in decent impact. I think he, he did enough there to justify the trade to some extent. I, I think, you know, what did they trade a future second? That's a pretty good deal for the value of Liam Henry. And I think there's a lot of upside there. So I would probably go as far as to say decent impact, even though he just played the 12 games. We saw enough to forecast that this might be a good trade for St. Kilda. Dersmer again is a, is a tricky one. I think, I don't think he played every game. I think he got injured as well. Um, I think he did a hamstring injury as well. So again, this is, Mixing it up a little bit here. I'd say decent impact. I thought he was pretty good for Essendon. And I don't think there were massive expectations on him. And I wouldn't say low impact. And he wasn't injured enough to be in this category here. So he was decent. Now we've got Elijah Hollands, who might be the trickiest one to categorize. He was brilliant for the cost. It was like an upgrade of 28 to 26 and like a future fourth or something ridiculous for Hollands. And he came in, averaged about 18 possessions and just about a goal a game for Carlton. In terms of bargains, it's one of the biggest bargains on this page. Uh, but he did have the, did he have the same impact as any of these guys? Probably not, but it was still one of the best bargain trades of last year. Hawthorne did a, have a heap of them themselves, but Carlton did very well and got a great result out of this. So I'm gonna put him somewhere in this decent impact category. Who was the best? highest impact player. It might have been D'Ambrosio and then followed by Grundy. Can I even do that? There we go. 
Ginevan Choll and James Jordan probably round out the top five. I think you got decent impact to different extents from these players. Some absolute bargains in there, and I think Hollands is probably the biggest bargain in there. Jordan Sweet, look, he, he wasn't as impactful as a Taylor Adams or a Ben Mackay or a Jack Gunston, Todd Goldstein, but again, I'd say decent impact for the cost, which makes him a little bit of an outlier in that mix, but he probably exceeded low impact but cheap, and he certainly wasn't in any other category. So I think Port Adelaide had decent impact out of the three of the four tools they recruited. And Soldo, well, you know, I didn't think he was playing poorly. He just couldn't get back into the team. So do you say below expectation? Maybe that one is harsh. Low impact but cheap. These guys are just probably like too hard to assess. Some of them didn't play footy. Some of them played a bit of footy. They're all cheap. Billings might be the one that I feel iffy about being in that category. I don't know if he was below expectation. And I also wouldn't say decent impact. And he was also kind of cheap. So maybe that justifies itself. Few players, probably, you know, Gresham and Schultz to different extents were expensive. Gresham more in salary. I expected more from Jade Gresham this year. I think Collingwood fans expected more of Lockie Schultz. Dylan Stevens didn't have a great year. Soldo, again, is the most debatable about these. Big new one got delisted. Tyler Brockman, yeah, had a poor year, in my opinion. And then you had a, a stack of injured players. So there you have it, guys. Absolutely let it rip. Let me know what I said in this video that you absolutely hated. What did you enjoy? What would you do differently? And of course, as I said, check out the link in the description below and you can actually do this yourself if you like. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.